with glasses or without them so <laughs> anyway it's been an improvement uh, good to be back with you in the mustard seed today it's a great privilege to preach the word here such a sympathetic ear to the word in this place and I can rejoice in that there's a great sympathy for the word of God so I would like to I would like to read five short passages of scripture. The, the first one is in first one is in Exodus twenty six. These five five short passages. Five in scripture is a sign of human frailty and weakness. So that may be significant for us today, as the one who's speaking is rather frail and weak. But anyway, we could read from these verses in Exodus chapter chapter twenty six, verse eleven. You shall make a veil of woven you shall make a veil woven of blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and the fine woven linen. It will be woven with artistic design of the cherubim. You shall, you shall hang it upon the four pillars of, the, of acacia wood, overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be gold and four sockets of silver, and you shall hang the veil from the clasps. Then you shall bring the ark of the testimony <coughs> in there, behind the veil, and the veil shall be a divider for you between the holy place and the most holy. You shall put a mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony, the most holy place. You shall set a table outside the veil and a lampstand across the table on the side of the tabernacle to order the south, and you shall put the table on the north side. Amen. And uh, then we'll look at the epistle to the Philippians. Oh, sorry. Is that it? Is that it? Yes, sir. The Epistle to the Philippians, chapter 2. Chapter 2 and verse 31. No, sorry. Verse, verse 5. 
Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on a cross. And then in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27, Verse 45. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over the, all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there when they heard that said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge filled with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let, him, let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the grave, after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. And then in Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way, which he consecrated to it for us through the veil, that is his flesh. God will bless the reading of these precious scriptures to us. I've been uh, having a little study or look at the tabernacle. And it's encouraged me to, re to speak of one of the furnishings of the tabernacle. There's various furnishings in the tabernacle. There's the, the uh, There's the Ark of the Covenant, which is symbolic of God's throne and his presence. There's a brazen altar, which is symbolic of the sufferings of Christ. And there's the golden altar, which is a, would be symbolic of the prayers of Christ.
as the golden lampstand which be, would be symbolic of uh, he being the light of the world. But I've been thinking about the veil, the veil of the temple. The veil of the temple speaks of Christ's coming into manhood and his glory and the incarnation was hidden by a veil. His glory was hidden and his manhood was hidden by a veil. The uh, that veil was the making of it, which I read about in Hebrews. You want to talk about for a minute in uh, Exodus. Chapter 26. It speaks of Christ's humanity. The veil speaks of Christ's humanity. It says, You shall make. And this veil was to divide between the holy place and the holy of holies. There was a division between the holy place and the holy of holies. And that veil was to come in between that. And it was made, it was 60 feet wide, 60 feet long, 30 feet wide, and it was six, uh, four inches thick. It took 600 priests to hang it. It was a, it was a marvelous piece of uh, uh, work. That was hung in the hole in, in the t in the tabernacle, and it divided between the holy of holies and the holy place. And the priest was the only one who was able to go. And the high priest was the only one that was able to go in that once a year to make sacrifice for his own sins and for sins for, of the people. Once a year, he was allowed to go in there. That marvellous work, I think it was a marvellous work, it says here that it shall make the, it shall make, it shall make the veil woven of blue, purple and scarlet thread of fine woven linen. The fine woven Linen would be, speak the, of the, the faultlessness of the Lord Jesus Christ. In his manhood here, he was faultless. It speaks of Christ's manhood. This veil speaks of his incarnation, of his taking up a body of flesh. And he was, it was made of, it was made of fine woven linen fine woven, faultless, and it was of linen, which was pure white, speaks of the purity of Christ's life here. The purity of his life. And then it says, it will be woven with artistic design of, of the cherubim. The cherubim were there to protect the holy of holies. That's what the cherubim represents, a protective element for the Holy of Holies. The cherubim were put in the Garden of Eden when sin came in. In the Garden of Eden when sin came in. And God placed the cherubim to guard the way to the tree of life. Thus far and no further. And the cherubim were put here. was saying the same thing in the, in the God of God thus far and no further as far as the Holy of Holies is concerned and only the priest was allowed to enter in 
through. The only the priest was allowed to enter in once a year to atone for his own sins and the sins of the people. And then it says, it will be woven with artistic design, with cherubim, and you shall hang it upon four pillars of acacia wood and overlay them with hooks of gold and so on. <coughs> oh, no, it's earlier, sorry. The veil shall be woven with, with blue. What does that speak of? It speaks of Christ, the heavenly man, coming down into, into, into manhood. That's what the blue represents. The heavenly man, another man from another place, taking up manhood and taking up a human form. Marvellous thing. The creator of the universe took up human form. He took a form of a man. Says in the beginning of John's Gospel, it says in the beginning in, in the beginning of Genesis, in the beginning of the Word, in the beginning was God, and in John's Gospel is like it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Who was here represented? It was a Lord of glory that came down from heaven. The one that came down from heaven. Another man from another place. The Lord Jesus came down from heaven to this earth to fulfill a purpose, to redeem the creation for himself. Redeem us. Wonderful thing that Christ Jesus came down. And then it says, the purple, the blue and the purple. The purple would speak of a shed blood. He came to die. He came to shed his blood that we might be redeemed. What a wonderful downstooping work that is, and that was, that Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who is the creator of all things, in the beginning, the creator of all things, came down from heaven and to shed his blood. This, this marvellous veil was, was threads of purple, of, of his, his threads of scarlet, speaking of his shed blood at Calvary. And then it says, he shall be woven in, in purple, speaking of his royalty. He's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Herod inquired when he, when he was born, where is he that is born king? Where is he? He was born king. When he died on the cross, the superscription was put upon him. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. He's king of kings and lord of lords. And that glory that he had was hidden in that veil, in that body that he took on. It's a wonderful thing to think of the Lord Jesus, the creator, as we've mentioned already. In the beginning was the word. He was the creator, and yet he took on human form. And he took on human form, which gave him a limitation. He limited his glory. He limited his glory. He didn't limit his deity. His deity was always his deity, but he limited his glory. His glory was limited. So he took, that's why I read in, 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 uh, in uh, Philippians, he took on the form of a man. And it says he became a beaten even unto death, and that, the death of the cross. Think of the features that he gave up in Philippians 2. Mm
Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. He was equal with God. He was equal with God. And yet, he laid his glory by. I had something here. Anyway, he, 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 he. let this mind be in you which also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. is that not an amazing thing? The creator, the one who was in the beginning with God, it says, made himself of no reputation. And taking on the form of a bondman, the creator of this universe, taking the form of a bondman, and coming in likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, humbled himself, and became obedient even unto death, and that, the death of a Oh, these things should affect us, that he laid his glory by. He laid his glory by, and it was, he was, the veil speaking to us eloquently of that very thing, that he laid his glory by. He says in John's Gospel, in chapter, John 20, uh, John uh, John 17, he says, in verse 5, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Here he was. Here, I have... And now, o Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I have had from bef with you before the world was. And then it says in verse 21, O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known you, that you sent me. Father, I, no, it's fair 24. Father, I desire that they whom you gave me may be with me, that where I am, you, they, may behold my glory. You know, what a type thing that was, that the Lord Jesus laid his glory by. He laid his glory by when he took up human form. He laid his glory by. What? He's going to take it again. And he says, Father, I desire that you, that those whom you have given me, may be with me, that they may behold my glory. And then, if we go to Matthew's Gospel, our first scripture, There, when he's hung on a cross, and he cried out these words that have been so often preached from, Eli, Eli, lambs of Bashkar, why have you forsaken me? There, when he bore the sin of the world, there's where he bore my sins, on Calvary's cross, when he was abandoned by God on that cross at Calvary. And it says, as we read down the chapter, now uh, some of those who stood by them and so on, but coming down further, he says, Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two. Think of this veil 
that took 600 priests to hang was torn in two from top to bottom. Some say, want to say that it was the earthquake that tore it. I torn it. But the scripture's clear. The earthquake happened after it was torn. Mm-hmm. After it was torn. So it wasn't the earthquake that tore it. It was God that tore it. Mm-hmm. Think of it four inches thick. It was woven four inches thick, 600 meters, 600 feet by 300 feet wide, and it was torn in two. Think of the priests, as they were, it was, it was from the sixth to the ninth hour. The priests would be preparing a sacrifice as that, in, in, in the temple, in the tabernacle. They would be preparing sacrifices when Jesus would die on the cross at these hours. And it says, at that very time when that happened, the temple curtain was torn in two. What a surprise that must have been to the to these priests as that curtain was torn in two, four inches thick. Torn in two. It was when Christ, God tore Christ's body. That's what he did. Christ tore Christ's body on Calvary's cross that we might receive the blessing of salvation. Christ died. So he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was forsaken because he took my place on the cross and he took everyone that believes him and place on the cross. Oh, what a thing. Why have you forsaken me? The sinless one bore the sins of us all. Those that trust in him were taken away as he bore them. And he cried these words, Why have you forsaken me? Oh, these things are so affecting to my heart. They should be affecting to all our hearts. That Christ's body was torn. It wasn't shredded. This veil wasn't shredded. It was torn. And it wasn't torn from the top. It was torn from the bottom. Bottom upwards. It was torn in two. Oh, Christ's body was torn for you and I. The suffering, the veil speaking of his flesh, the veil speaking of his sufferings. But we think of what Hebrews says. Hebrews 10 says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Oh, what a thing now for the believer. It's not, the veil's been removed. It's now, there's a a hymn that comes to mind and we used to sing it. Sorry, some of these hymns are no longer with us, but uh, but, uh, the hymn we sang, the new and living way stands open now from heaven. The blood of Christ is seen all way. God's gift is given. The river of his grace through righteousness supplied is flowing o'er the barren place where Jesus died. Oh, that wonderful sentiment in these words. And now the veil was a a barrier to the Holy of Holies. Now it's been torn into, it's the way in for us. We can all get in through that torn veil to the presence of God, to the presence of Christ. The veil had been torn away, which is flesh. had been torn away, and we can enter in. Oh, have we entered in? Have we entered in and found mercy and grace? And peace. Mm-hmm. That's what we get when we go through the veil. Because he's a new and living way has opened up to us. It's not hidden anymore. Christ, Christ is no longer hidden from view. His glory will be revealed in the coming days. We've seen restore John say in John's gospel he say, Restore 
again, that glory. And that glory, Christ on high when he was raised from the dead, his glory was restored. That's wonderful verses in John that we've read already, but they're wonderful verses. John 17. John 17. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself for the glory which I had before the world was. That glory. And he's asking that to be restored. He's asking that to be restored. And he says in verse 24, Further, I desire that they also you gave me may be with me where I am that they may behold my glory. Oh, that's wonderful to my heart. And the Lord is appealing for us to be with him where he is, that we may behold his glory. Oh, that's wonderful. And you know, it's a wonderful gospel. And in, in, in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4, it says, if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled in those who are lost or perishing. Is the gospel veiled to any one of us in here today? Is it veiled? You're perishing. You're lost. Christ has, the God has torn the veil and we can enter in. There's no barrier for us now to enter in to be with Christ and know salvation. The barrier has been torn in two. God tore it in the death of Christ. And he hung there on the cross. He made provision for my sin and for your sin. It's about trusting in him. Oh, let not the gospel that we preach today be a veiled gospel. But it's a veil to those who are lost. Sobering matter. If our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are lost. Or oh, maybe come to a greater appreciation of Christ, humanity, as represented in this field. It hid his glory, but now that glory has been revealed because the veil had been torn in two. Or oh, maybe come to appreciate the Lord Jesus Christ, the heavenly man, the one who shed his blood as represented why is the scarlet threads and the purple robe, the purple threads that speak of his the kingly glory? Oh, may we trust him. Trust him for our salvation and know the blessing of his presence. Enter in. May we be blessed by these few thoughts, simple thoughts, but wonderful things to know Jesus as our Saviour. Ask these things in the name of, uh, ask that, that we may be blessed by them for his name's sake. We could maybe sign 291.